welcome upon the face of the earth. He said, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. So I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Oh God, hear from heaven. Forgive our sins and heal our land. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. We'll go back to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Verse 2, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. Before I commence it tonight, please read the instructions that the ushers are holding on the notice that they are presenting to the congregation uh, so that you will be adequately guided. We were trying to establish the reason for which the book of Proverbs was written. We saw a part of it to know wisdom and instruction. Second reason is to perceive the words of understanding. To perceive the words of understanding. Now, we are going to try to gain insight into that word understanding. And to take us further in that adventure, I would like us to turn to the book of Job chapter 33, beginning from verse 12. To perceive the words of, of understanding. I was using someone's pen the other time. Okay. No, you are. No, it's all right. To perceive the words of understanding. Some more revelation is dropping. And if I don't write it, I will forget it. That's the reason for which I'm crying out. All right. Okay. Someone has come to the rescue. You know, the Holy Ghost is the teacher of the teacher. And sometimes uh, he meets you right on the pulpit. In the book of Job, chapter 33, verse 12, a great statement is made here, and we want to justify the statement. He said, Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that God is greater than man. That's the statement I'm talking about. God is greater than man. Man. And he gave, I hope you know, it's Elihu that is speaking here. Elihu initially was not allowed to speak among the elders. The elders were the cardinals from different parts of the earth. They were the holders, custodians of philosophy. Who were not even told who he accompanied on this voyage to visit the cardinal of the east that was afflicted and to explain the reason why such a high-ranking personnel will come under the scourge of affliction. All the experts exhausted their wisdom in trying to bring perspective to Job's condition. And when they could not fully prosecute the mission, Elihu begged to speak. Then he brought a perspective that all the elders avoided. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration. Are you with me? The inspiration of the Almighty give it them understanding. That means there is a perspective you will never anticipate except the Holy Spirit through inspiration quickens your mind in that light. It's the same Elihu that is speaking here. 
because he began his own discourse from chapter 32 and here we are in Job chapter 33. And the same man again makes a statement, God is greater than man. Now, he gave many reasons, but I just, I'm interested in one of, on one of the reasons. So verse um, 13, he said, why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth no account of his matters. That's one reason. Have you ever misunderstood God? You held God in a bad light. You felt God was weaker. Okay. Evangelist, please check my pigeonhole. I have a cage of face masks. Freshly retrieved from the pharmacy. <laughs> and if you find anyone going in a strange way, <laughs> aid them with the equipment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, have you ever seen a man that held God in a bad light? Someone says, oh, he be, he's been coming to church and then this was what the pastor did. This was what the pastor did. He will never come to church again. In fact, he doesn't want to have anything to do with God. Well, we are not supporting the pastor. But the fact that you have a quarrel with God will not put God under pressure to feel so insecure as to want to respond to you. He doesn't give account of his matters. Someone just communicated to me after... Um, the missionary, Mark John, gave us his presentation and spoke about Germany and differences in culture and all of that. One of my friends in, I've forgotten the city he's in, in Germany, he wrote some WhatsApp messages before I got home. And what was it about? He said, uh, um, 67% of, of Germany, of Germans are atheists. 67% of Germans are atheists. They don't want to have anything to do with God. But you know God? He will never come under pressure to respond. Whether you understand him, you curse him, you misunderstand him, he never comes under pressure to explain himself. This is what Elihu is saying. He doesn't give account of any of his matters. Jesus made a statement. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Then the next statement he made after that is more scary. He said, no man come unto to the Father except by me. Now, if someone is that important, he doesn't need to advertise himself. He doesn't need to advertise. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. If you ever find the Father, it is because you came to me. Such a person doesn't need to, when you say, eh, God is not good, he, he won't be under pressure to come and sit with you and say, let's, can we discuss this matter? The Bible says he doesn't give what? An account. So when you are dealing with God, be careful. I know a pastor in this city, once upon a time, he began to grow in the miraculous. Are you with me? Grow in signs and wonders. Those of you that have been here long enough, when I describe, maybe you have an understanding of it. But the story is what I'm trying to communicate, not the name of the person. In fact, don't even try to think about it. You will be wrong. Now, so this young man began to grow in the miraculous. And one day they brought a cripple to him. And he rushed at the cripple and prayed, and the person became more crippled. Prayed for the person with so much faith, as though he believed that the person would jump up. Instead, the person went and died. So he threw his Bible away. He said, God is not real. He said, now what he wants to do is to be a scientist and make inventions. God, do you know Baba, Jehovah? He doesn't give an account of his matters. That is one of the reasons, one of the evidences 
of the fact that he's not your mate. The fact that you say, mm, he's not aware. Not aware. He will not give account of any of his matters. Secondly, Elihu took us further in verse 14. He said, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. It means that God's speakings is higher than your thought faculty. Except him, himself, God, that is speaking helps you. You will never hear what he's saying. Are you with me? I did a 14 days fast. I was going to preach somewhere. The place I was going to preach was the place I eventually found my wife. So you know that 14 days fast, I was praying for more than the meeting, but I didn't know. What? Okay, you don't understand me. So <laughs> I was and in my own opinion, God did not answer. Because after 14 days, I was still in the dark as to what the emphasis that I should be bringing from God to the people. Meanwhile, anytime I prayed and fasted, I sang a song. A song came. Second day, I prayed, fasted. The same song will come. After the fasting, I'll forget it. Seventh day, the song came. After the fasting. And while I was traveling for the meeting, the song came again. I didn't know. Are you with me? Please, if you are handed out, if... If a face mask is handed to you, say thank you and receive it. <laughs> receive it with joy and use it. Hallelujah. The reason why you received it, why we are giving you is because you can't control something. There's something you can't control. You want to control it, but you can't. So we we'll help you with an equipment. Now, it was when I went for the meeting that I discovered that that song I sang was actually God's response to my prayer and fasting. M my message was that song. But see, I could not perceive it. Why? Because God speaking is on a higher plane than the human mind. Except God helps you, you will not be able to hear him. That's the second thing that Elio identifies that makes him put a strong presentation of the fact that God is what? Greater than Third reason. Are you there 15, please? This is what concerns me. This is a third reason, and this is my own concern. You know, we're talking about understanding. The book of Proverbs was written. Ushers. Where are the ushers? If you're an usher, stand up. So come and collect some marks so that we can free up the evangelist. And at the end of the day, the masks that are left, I give them a cage, one of the cages. Then leave the rest. All right. So, Pastor Tony, make sure we have cages of masks available. You can't help yourself. You, you want to budget. <laughs> it means you will need an equipment. You will need an equipment. Hallelujah. Yes, this is what interests me. Don't laugh and then don't cough because <laughs> it will mean you need help. You need some help. The Bible says in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed, verse 16, then, we are still talking God is greater than man. He opened the ears of men. That means you hear something or you see a dream. But he sealed the instruction. So the dream, you have seen it all. But even though you went to the university, you studied in University of Joss, you don't know the meaning. It's one of the signs that God is what? Greater than man. He can give you a, a dream and decide to seal up the meaning. You are very experienced. You can counsel people, even counsel governors. But that dream you saw, you try to make a permutation out of it. Okay, blue means dry season. 
this one means like this, this one means. It will make sense see, with all of the engineering that you studied at the University of Agriculture. He that gave you that dream, he sealed the instruction, the meaning of what you saw. And that, according to Elihu, is a proof that God is greater than man. What, what, what we are talking about here is called understanding. The first thing I want to say to you about understanding is this. There is no possibility for you to gain understanding from God's perspective except God himself gives you an inspiration. Understanding means that you are seeing a matter from God's perspective. What does it mean? You are seeing a matter from God's perspective. You know that dream you had? Pastor, that dream you shared with me yesterday. It came to pass yesterday. But the interpretation you gave was not what came to pass. But I know that it is what you saw that happened. So what God, you see, God is greater than all of us. God, God, huh? He's greater than you. He's greater than me. He's greater than everybody. Sometimes, it is when some things happen that you actually know that, oh, God actually spoke about this. Then he now opens your understanding to know, oh, that is what he spoke about. Just for you to know that he had spoken about it before it happened. But there's a way he sealed your understanding uh, such that you could not even influence what happened. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Understanding means seeing a matter from God's perspective. Apart from God's help, there is a perspective on issues that you will never, never have. And that perspective on an issue that is held from God's perspective is the key to understand. I would suggest that the ushers will be moving around, just moving around on the aisle uh, in search of people that need help. Let me give you a scripture quickly. You see, if I, if I, if I, if I intervene, if I intervene on these issues, you will say, our pastor doesn't have patience. If I intervene on these issues, you will say, your pastor doesn't have patience. You say, ah, that's, it's a hard man. But you know what? Even in old age, I will not allow phone calls in the service. Even in old age. All right, let's go to Psalm 36, verse 9. Psalm 36, verse 9. Stay with me. You know, I said that understanding... is seen from God's perspective. And you can have a thousand and one perspectives and never be capable of seeing from God's perspective except he helps you. And so the Bible says that there is a spirit in man, but it is the inspiration of the Almighty that giveth them what? Psalms 36 verse 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life. That's the first major statement that we need to resolve 
With thee is the fountain of life. Second statement we need to resolve is, in thy light we shall see light. In the illumination that your spirit makes available, we gain access to a new perspective. This perspective cannot be sustained apart from his light, apart from his illumination. Are you still with me? And you are not with me. No, I know you are telling me you are with me with your mouth, but I'm the reader, I'm reading. I'm reading your level of compliance. You see, he said, with thee, with God, is a fountain of life. If you are born again, you have a facility. The facility is called the fountain of life. It's called the wellspring of life. Uh, the Bible says with joy you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. Uh, the, the, the wells of salvation are deeply seated within your heart. But it is possible for you to bring the content of that well to the surface. Right? So that's a fountain. A fountain is an arrangement where you can bring water out of the depths of the depths. And you bring it to the surface. So the Bible says that in the, in the arrangement, in the arrangement of salvation, what you have is a functional fountain. And part of the tributaries that you can find when that fountain springs is light. And it is that light that springs from that fountain that can furnish you with a perspective that will register the thoughts of God concerning a matter. Can you see this is a very spiritual matter? This understanding matter is a very what? Spiritual matter. Because it is very spiritual, that's why I'm going with it. We have not started the, the journey. The journey is very complicated. Very complicated journey. But I'm using some scriptures just to bring you closer. Before we begin to attend to um, a few more scriptures that we consolidate what I'm trying to explain to you. So that when you have these experiences that I'm going to be explaining, you will know that God is painstakingly taking you through a process of, of, of furnishing understanding. Those days when I was still saying, meanwhile, is for your information. I know you are not aware, so that's what I'm telling you. This, my own mother you are seeing here, is the only lady I proposed to about marriage. The first and last. And a lot of people heard my story and they wanted to have the same record and the record broke many times. It's not by power. You don't know, it's not by power. <laughs> it's not by power. Not by might. Uh, but as we go, I will show you a few things. And the Lord will. He said, with thee is what? Is the fountain of life. And in thy light, it is only in his light that that perspective opens up. You will never be able to attain to that perspective any other way else except he gives his light. Is that clear? Good. Let me take you on a, a short trip. Since we are already in the book of Psalms, let's just go to Psalms 119, verse 130. He said the book of Proverbs was written so that we can perceive the words of understanding. That means if a pastor, Tony, gains understanding of some things from God and he's speaking it, are you with me? You will need to be a man of wisdom to be able to pick what in his comments came from an understanding from God and what in his comments came from his own experience 
his own research, his own study. Are you here? To perceive the words of understanding. We, we, we can have a two hour teaching session. Two hour teaching session. And in this two hour teaching session, there might be a 15 minutes, listen to me, focus on me, focus. There might be a 15 minutes disclosure that was sourced from the heart of God's inspiration. And then the next 40 minutes was used to explain that inspiration. Then after that inspiration, there was another moment of disclosure that came from the Holy Ghost. You will not know the moments except you are a man of wisdom. Being a man of wisdom will give you the discernment to be able to perceive the words of understanding. And those words that precipitated from God's illumination, God's perspective, they are supernatural words that can produce results in the life of men in any generation. Because the things that are hid belong to God and the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children. If you have gotten a revelation from God, it doesn't expire in your lifetime. It is something your children can inherit. Yes. You want to give them houses, also give them understanding. That while I was in Kano, this was what the Lord taught me. This whole book is a discipleship that someone was giving to his son. The son that he was preparing to come and take on leadership. That's what that book is about. So the book is actually the inheritance of understanding. The things that you secure from God. The shelf life of those things don't expire even in your lifetime. You can Pass it on. But you need to be a wise man to be able to perceive the words of understanding. How many of you have heard a preacher preach and for 15 minutes it became boring? You left. Has it happened to you before? It's because you are growing in wisdom. The man was just, he had not received any inspiration from God. He was just talking, talking. He thinks preaching is talking. And if you have those spiritual senses at exercise, you will know this one has not met with the Lord. He's a noisemaker, an echo. If you have this dimension of wisdom operating in your life, you human beings will not be able to waste your time. Because you can easily perceive the words of understanding. Is that clear? All right, Psalms 119, verse 130. He said, the entrance of thy word. He gave it what? Um, you see, we just said that with thee is the fountain of life and in thy light we shall see light. Hmm? Part of the facilities through which God ministers light is the word. And the word we are talking about here is not the Lugos. Is the Rema. Is the proceeding word of God. That word that just came out of the mouth of God now. That thing that Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the proceeding word of God. That's what God just said now. That's what God is saying now. That Word that God is saying now has the ability to give light. We were traveling and we ran into a mud. And for 45 minutes we were struggling to bring the car out. And since I was the only pastor in the car, they said I should not labor with them in trying to rescue the car. I should just stand somewhere else. There will labor. And as I entered the shade, the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell them to reverse the car. But if you look at the arrangement, reversing the car will complicate the matter. So I kept, I, I kept quiet. I kept quiet because 
The guys were willing to walk. When my time, because I had a crusade on the other side, and if we, if we spend another 30 minutes here, it's going to affect my active time. And I called the driver and said, I know what I want to tell you is foolish, but be foolish with me for a few minutes. Go and reverse this, your car. Then the driver began to tell me when he got his driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> How skillful he has been in his expedition. That there was a time even police employed him and he ran and they caught thieves. They caught thieves. <laughs> I say, I'm not in doubt of your capacity. But what I'm saying is, just be foolish with me. Go and reverse this car. It's okay, because pastor says so. When we reversed the car, we came out of the mall. He himself was so surprised that he didn't believe it. The entrance of his rhema, it does what? It gives light. It even gives perspective. That light becomes the reason for perspective to those that are unlearned. Now, the thing about spiritual matters is this. You can be a guru in spiritual things having not gone to secular school. Yes, because you can read. The simple, the unlearned, the uneducated can receive understanding through the entrance of the word of God. Don't ever forget that understanding has to do with a perspective that is furnished through the illumination of God only. Is that clear? Oh, you are not with me. All right, let me take you further. I take you to the book of Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Then we'll begin from verse number 11. We have a long, long way to go in our study of the book of Proverbs. And my prayer is that the Lord will not change our course. Um, that's the prayer. So if you want to pray for me, pray that the Lord will steady us on the book of Proverbs for some time. You say you want to, you have, you have done with youth service and you want to choose a city to dwell in. Who told you that you have capacity to produce the function called direction? When the Bible says it's not given to man to direct his steps, it's not part of what you have the capacity for. And all the times you went off and took off like a tornado, you came back many years later even the little you had, you had lost it in transit. It was because there was no understanding in your way. Somewhere in the east, a young man went to pay bride price. It was after he finished paying the bride price, he realized he never proposed to the girl. I don't want to press it. You. <laughs> This, this lecture will become deep if I if I enter into He just realized that way too. <coughs> this is the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 11. He said, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light. Can you see light there? Light. It is that light that brings what? Understanding. So the secret of Daniel was that he was a man of inspiration. He was open to the light that the Spirit of God gives the heart of a man. And because that light was a reoccurring expression of God in him, he had qualities that native doctors could not even fake. 
He said, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. In him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made the master of magicians. Because he was operating in that realm, that understanding that came through the light of God, he was obviously superior to magicians. He was obviously superior to astrologers. He was superior to Chaldeans. He was superior to soothsayers. And if it were been wasted, he was superior to necromancers. To Aleku. Ada Aleku was under him. Ada Aleku. Sorry, those of you that are listening from other countries, Aleku is the traditional name for necromancy within the context of the culture in which we live here. Ada Aleku is the father of the necromancers. He, he's, he trains necromancers, teaches them how to communicate with the dead, with fa familiar spirits. A man that operates in that realm consistently, where the Holy Spirit comes to bring witness, bring perspective, and establish understanding according to the perspective of God. That man will be chief, master of the Chaldeans. He will be master of the magicians. He will be master of the soothsayers. He will be master of the astrologers. You want to operate on a level that it is impossible for other Lego to operate in. Light was found in Daniel. I don't know, but right now, in my work with God, I want to be the reason why Satan will have, Satan will have headache. And he will testify that, ah, ah, this boy caused us problems. <laughs> That's what I want to be right now. He never left my path when I was growing up. He, he made it so frustrating, so terrible. So now I found myself in Christ Jesus. I want to do him a favor of showing him that there is something called light that will make astrologers, their business will pack up. If there's a man that has light, people won't consult Aleko again. And the light comes to furnish the perspective that comes from God. What, what did that light do? Next verse, next verse, next verse. Before I open a few scriptures. He said, for as much as an excellent spirit. Now let me explain what an excellent spirit is. Have you ever seen somebody before? He's a big man. And he's so big, so large, so prominent. Uh, such that he cannot connect with simple poor people in the village. He's, he only is roving uh, uh, in the circle of the people of his own standing. Have you seen those kind of people before? Now, Daniel, you know Daniel? The excellent spirit in Daniel made him to be able to connect with the people in the high class and he connected also with the people in poverty. You know for you to be able to engage and you are relevant to people at the top of the spectrum and at the bottom of the spectrum you need to be a thousand men That's the, it was the spirit of excellence that gave that he, he fit perfectly among the poor people they needed him and he fit perfectly among the elite in my study of the excellent spirit that's what I found was his expression there are some people that are in the local environment, they are champions. When you take them to Azor Rock, you will see that you have taken them beyond their electrolyte. They don't have electrolytes that can operate at that level. But Daniel was needed by the high and the mighty. In fact, at the time they were introducing him here, he had gone into retirement. He was too old. He had served kings raised nations and he had gone into retirement and his relevance did not die because he was 60 years they had to invoke him from the woods 
for him to stand again in the palace after retiring for a long time because his type could not be found and what was the capacity that operated in him he had light light that light furnished him with a perspective that came from the realm of God you see when I study the Bible sometimes I will I will ah, it's too it's a wonder I will stop say no this is too much for one day if I study more it, it will be wrong let me stop here and I will think about it oh my God oh my God oh my God they brought this man back from retirement and they had to introduce the king to him that this was the veritable joker in the cabinet of your father he was made the master of the magicians <laughs> the master so this Daniel was the prince of the wise men for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding this was the manifestation of his competencies he could interpret dreams i hope you know that's it was because of this scripture i took you to job chapter 33. Eh? god can give you a dream and then he can seal up the meaning and that is a proof that god is greater than you you may use your physics to you can calculate escape velocity you can calculate acceleration due to gravity you can calculate buoyancy you can calculate up trust but you can't interpret that dream because it will take light it will take god shedding understanding from his own perspective to register his thoughts about that matter on your heart your mental efforts will amount to not as far as the hunt for understanding is concerned so every level of competence that Daniel had was because he could receive light from God and because he could receive light from God he could interpret dreams because he could receive light from God he could show the meaning of hard sentences because he could receive light from God he could dissolve doubt when people when a nation is in doubt what you need is go and bring Daniel from retirement let him give a speech of 45 minutes. He will give life to the veins of the nation again. He will cast the vision before their face that even every country man will want to be a Nigerian. I hope you know we lack the, that kind of Daniel now. Because do you know how many people left Nigeria from last year? Oh, visit the airport. You will pity us. People are in the hot. There's COVID. There's death. There, there. Some even went not by airport. They went by the strange route, the very strange route. And they were intervening, one of them in Germany. How did you come here? He said, she just entered water. And that was how she was moving. Moving and then she appeared. <laughs> there is no season in which we need light more than now. The darkness is obvious. The writings of the, on the walls have not been interpreted. There are many more reasons to be afraid than to be in faith. Many more questions and answers. We need men like Daniel that can come forth with light, with God's perspective, God's mind. Meanwhile, Elihu said, there is a spirit in man and it is the inspiration of the Almighty that gives us understanding. I wanted to make us travel to the heart, the crucible, that action place of the Holy Ghost and show you what light does there. That's what. And my text is in the book of Matthew, but we have struggled. And we have not been able to arrive there. When you see a great man, it's not great by chance. No. If he rises and becomes influential and he can stay influential, is not by chance. He either has light from darkness and that light that he has from darkness is reproach but he doesn't know. Everything he does from the lens of that light will bring more reproach. The way he does politics is different. 
the way he governs is different. When Eve is on the throne, there must be reproach in the land. Because the light he has received is darkness. You can't stay in a certain capacity for a long time if you don't have light. Either from God or from the devil. The challenge is that the sons of God have despised light. So the simple people have no understanding. And the job of a teacher is to take people from information to understanding. So that the little among them can become a thousand. So that the small among them can become a strong nation. Light can create possibilities from a people that don't have confidence in themselves. Kings can come from the midst of them. And princes that decree justice just because a teacher that can move people from information to understanding arises. Then the activities of grace upon their heart is multiplied. And what limited their ancestors would not be able to limit them. The Bible says in this Daniel was found the ability to interpret dreams, to show hard sentences, to dissolve doubts, to dissolve doubts. All of these are possible because a man was able to lay hold on the illumination that came from the perspective of God. In order for me to end my lecture for tonight, because I didn't even get to stand. A scripture is calling me now. I think the scripture calling me is in the book of Luke. Not in Luke, it's in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22, as I try to round up. Matthew 6, 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Who knows what this scripture means? What does it mean for your eye to be single? Help me, help me. It's Bible study. We can get contributions from the congregation. Yes, uh, do we have a microphone quickly? Microphone, I want to get a feedback. Um, those of you online, you can come up with a feedback. What does it mean when the Bible says, If thy eye be single? The light of the body is the eye. Meanwhile, all of these statements are metaphors. They are metaphors. The eye there. Is a metaphor. And so, yes? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, yeah. According to the emphasis on that scripture, mm. what the eyes means is that um, it means to be focused. Okay, it's the instrument it, of focus, yeah. yeah? It means to be consistent, to have a, a single point of view. Yeah, it needs to be focused it's because it's by binocular vision. Binocular vision. The eyes, human eyes are designed in such a way that its strength is focus. If I'm focusing on you, it means I'm, I'm blind to the people at my back. So there is a focus principle. There is a focus principle. You got that right. I give you 30% already. 30% already. There's a focus principle of the eyes. You're not with me. You're not with me. You're not with me. The, the, what you did not say is the objective of your focus. The objective of your focus. There's a focus principle of the eyes. The eyes operate by that principle. And then the, sec the second thing is the objective of your focus. You make Christ your unique goal. You see, when I pray, how do I pray? 
I'm waiting for Christ within me to tell me what to pray about. So my focus is not without. My focus is within. The journey of a believer is to make Christ his unique goal. And as you journey with Christ, understanding will be coming about every area of your life. And it will come to pass that there is no aspect of your life that is held in darkness. Because Christ brings illumination to every aspect of your life. In the month of August 2019, I went to Uyo to preach. As they ushered me into the hotel, then Jesus begins to speak to me. He said, I've come to set you free. So that where I am, there also will my servant be. And he was speaking about my job. I ran to my father and the Lord. I said, I need to cancel. It's a strange world. Meanwhile, in that world, the directive was not clear. So what is the Lord saying? He's put it, then the wise man, because I don't know how many wise men as wise as my father in the Lord. He's, he's a technocrat. And his altar is bogus. Yes. Yes. Of all spiritual men I've been close to, none like him. Hallelujah. So he told me, you are around the season where God will require you to resign from your job. So begin to arrange. So when I left there, I was guided. I went to preach somewhere for a renowned prophet in this country. Renowned prophet, a great prophet. After ministering, the prophet was blessed, so blessed, because he had never met me before. So blessed, so he took me to his office. So he, he, he said, I heard that you work with the government. I said, yes, I work with the government, all of that. The prophet now said, don't resign now. Add, add two more years. I ran to my father and the Lord. I said, you told me that I should begin to prepare. Someone else now said two years. And like I said, he's a wise man. He said, there's a place for people to prophesy. But we, don't, we are not led by what? By prophecy. We are led by the light of God in our spirit. When I could find the time, I went into one of the hotels in this city for three days to pray. And I prayed for three days and God said nothing. When my, my rent of the hotel expired, I carried my bag, left the place, discouraged. I said, God, this thing is hard. Though. And I was going for a crusade. So while we were going for the meeting, I was speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And the thing was sweet. You know those days, a time when you speak in tongues and it's sweet. Don't stop, don't stop. It's like honey. It was in that moment that he now told me, young man, say yes. He said, when will your passport expire? He said, to expire on the 28th of September. He said, that day, your job expires. That's light. There is no way I would have stumbled on that perspective apart from his impute. And that was what led to my tendering the resignation later. If any other person went and tendered without light, what happens to the person thereafter will be the person's story, not God's story in the person's life. You know, there are two things there. That we have human history and we have divine history within human history. Divine history is made when men yield to God to do what God wants. It means it is God that is acting on earth through them. 
making his own history. And then you, like Methuselah, it can be that you just spent 969 years and you spent it in human history, giving birth to sons and daughters. He said, the light of the body is the eyes. So if thine eye be single, thine whole body shall be full of light. As I stand here today, I have seen about 10 years into my future. Because the light of God is not only for your feet, not only for the present, who to marry, who not to marry, what, what to do, which city am I going to stay. The light of God can also be an illumination that brings perspective of the future. My spirit has already captured where I'm going. And if you are a healthy believer, you should not be in dark, totally in dark, about what your future holds. The difference between one Christian and the other Christian is the light that he has received. Those of you that came for Bible school, see, be determined that you will not finish, you will not leave without if you are going to have light, you may need to do much more than the average student is doing. Because all of you may come for lectures. But some people may go for adventures. Adventures in the spirit. To secure light. I've been with people in the same place. In the same place. Just like Ezekiel said. They were captives of the king of Babylon. And they, they alighted at the beach of River Kappa for a moment everybody was groaning meanwhile this Ezekiel was a church boy he was raised in a very good home he never knew there was darkness in the world until he became a captive he saw fornication he saw extortion he saw murder ah! his heart could not ah! hold it and when they were there at Kappa before his heart broke finally when people were crying about things that they have missed. The Bible says he saw the visions of God. Now, what made a difference for him was a perspective that came by the Holy Ghost. And this perspective, you can never get it any other way except by God. For the entrance of his world, it giveth light. He gave it understanding to the simple. We are going to pray in a moment. But this prayer is solemn. It's a solemn prayer. May not, you may not need to drive it in an aggressive manner. So that it will distill into the core of your being. Oh Jesus. Perspective. Perspective. Listen. I was raised by a teacher and because I was raised by a teacher we are very meticulous eh? we that we are raised some of you were raised by evangelists some of you were raised by prophets I was raised by a teacher and where I was raised if you don't have a scripture you can't read you can't lead prayer every prayer point you lead you must because according to those of us that had teacher training there is no prophecy nothing God wants to say that is not already in the logos so you don't you may not even need to say does hear the Lord you can bring the thing out and say it with scripture and then he that has an ear we now hear what the spirit is saying to the churches and when we were raised we, we never interfaced with the ministry of a prophet never and I mean never. So all we knew that God does was that he teaches people, grounds people in the truth. That was all we knew. And then the second thing we knew is that in order for what you are receiving from God to be grounded, internalized, you will have to pray. So we had two weapons, prayer and the word. The gift of the spirit will not operate to, but the word was hot. That was how I was raised. The charismatic aspects were things we were not used to. So it took me time to be able to give a word of knowledge. It took me time. 
It was a prophet I saw. He would just come like this and say, pastor didn't teach us this this dimension and I followed that prophet a prophet will sleep he won't pray me I'm the one that will pray till daybreak the prophet will just wake up my kakoboko sekikako his prayer has finished his prayer ascended and when we go out for the crusade he will be so anointed that he can take his handkerchief and heal the blind And after healing the blind, everybody is calling his name, calling his name. He will go back and take Pandediam. He will sleep. I will be there. Say, go, 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 go. Say, go, 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 go. Till they break. He wake up the next morning. He say, tomorrow night we are going to pray. That tomorrow night. I'm the only one that is going to pray. <laughs> but when he wakes up, he will be on the bed and say, Zika Komo Kope! Prayer. Say, what is this? I realized later that he was leaving and ministering from his gift. And I was living and ministering for my life. That's why our spiritual training was different. The one living and ministering from his life can give you practical examples of his experience of the things he's teaching. The one living from the gift who can just stir the gift up and minister to you. The one ministering from life, if you are a fornicator and you come under his ministry, because of his commitment to the Puritan ways, that loss will dry up without prayer. Hmm? And the one ministering from the gift can come and do, and your problem will still be there, your issue. This thing confused me, but the one I had was the only thing I knew, and I could not switch. This my man went somewhere, one country, and he started calling their name. That was how he got invitation to 22 countries. By the time he got to Kenya, he, he, he was ministering like this. He said, who has HIV, HIV, HIV? They came like 20 something. Took this kind of water, opened it. Hold it in a cup. If he gives them, they will fall. They will drink and fall. He spoke this man. <laughs> and the meeting was like seven days or so. The people had the time to go and do tests and come back and meet him on the pulpit the next day. They were all negative. Yes. I know the man I'm talking about. If it's gift. All of them were healed. That was how he got invited to the Asso Rock of, of Kenya. And he went there with, you know, prophesying, that's his, he, he lives there. Me and him can sleep on the bed. He wake up in the morning and say, oh, he didn't pray. He said, oh. He will start prophesying to you. Those words will never fall. Never. Then I saw a man that was gifted. Eh? That one is different from a man that is rooted. Before we know it, the president of Kenya was begging him to take citizenship and become a Kenyan. They gave him a land in the heart of Nairobi. The time they gave him the land, the land was shillings, Kenya shillings. One naira 
one Kenya shilling was two naira. So the land was nine million Kenya shillings then. It was 18 million naira that time. That time. If it's gift, he was a master. He never saw. He operated seven gifts of the spirit in one service. He can tell you what you are carrying in your bag. He can tell you. He can tell you. He, oh, I saw a gift that man. I was his intercessor from morning to night. I was wondering if God had forgotten me. I know many of you like gift. But if it has no foundation, you are going for destruction. There were nations that they used red carpet to welcome him from the president's private jet. He is very powerful. But he's a small man. He's a small man. Lady. So one day he was with one of the customs officers that was a giant. They wanted to stop him from entering, entering a country. He, he just did like, like this. The tall man fell somewhere like this. Ten years later, Ten years later, I started noticing that the same gift that my prophet had, I had all of them. But God, I was on another program. In the program that I was in, the life was more important than the gift. Hmm? Ten years later, the gift began to the thing I saw him do started doing it then I now discovered why God took me through my path because the gift is going to make you attractive, you attract things to you but if you don't have the strength if you have not been with the Lord enough to be rugged in God there are many things that will divert your course in life and if you don't have the stature of intimacy with God that gift will be the reason why you will become corrupt. The eye, the light of the body is the eye. And if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Don't ask for a gift, ask for light. So that you can know how to set your foot like our ancestors did when they navigated through uncharted territory it was moses that found a, a way in the belly of a river that was his battle that's for light a gift will come as you mature it will come as a fruit it will come like a tree that is mature that will bear fruit and your stem will be so thick the weight of the fruits will not be so strong that the stem cannot carry I speak in parables to somebody in the congregation. Let us pray. In a moment of time. Can you ask the Lord? Give me light. The Bible says, Give me understanding and I shall live. Give me understanding and I shall live. Don't waste your time in the house of God. Make sure you are securing light and you are making progress in the direction of your ordination. Ask him to give you understanding. Live by the understanding he makes available. And many of you may be asking questions. Why is it that the gift is not manifest? You are on a different program. God wants to give you a strong stem, a very strong stem, so that when the fruits begin to board, the wheat that is brought on the stem, the stem will have the capacity to carry it. Give me understanding. And I shall live. Give me understanding. And I shall live. 
We live by understanding. We live by understanding. We live by understanding. We live by understanding. I koseli bo gombre heze kaba kuria mazalet. Imboro se katia bo konda hisko brez ko vala maturia zeli kam brez ko vela mokoria bahalata. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding. Give me understanding. And I shall live. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I think tomorrow is Wednesday. So this is um, power and prophetic service. I will teach on the gift of word of wisdom. When I finish the teaching, I will demonstrate that gift. So that if anybody is in doubt how the gift operates, you will see the theory aspect to establish, ground you in the doctrine of the gift. Then you will see the practical aspect. Many years later, God gave me the handle of the gifts of the Spirit in such a way that I can actually teach it and demonstrate it. That was where God was taking me to. He was not taking me just to the place of demonstration. He wanted me to be able to teach it and demonstrate it. That means I would need to have authority to wield the gifts. And in order to have authority to wield it, I need a strong stem. So I had to stay under his government for a long time. If God loves you, you know what he does? He will make you cook well. Because there are too many things in this life that are designed to destroy you. They will not have mercy on you. They will destroy you to the letter. So if God loves you, one of the things he does is he allows you to grow under him for long so that you can become strong. Do you understand? Mm. Give me understanding. You see, if you don't live by understanding, you will think that a man that is gifted, that is planting churches all over the world is a wise man. If he doesn't have the depth to, to sustain the level of visibility he's climbing into, that's how his fall will be great. Because his stem is not strong enough. So, have you ever seen Peter Mango? Peter Mango. How heavy it is. Think of one, two thousand Peter Mangoes on one tree. If the stem is not strong, that fruit that is the result of the cultivation, the fruit, the body of the fruit will become the reason why the tree will go like this. If God likes it, what it, it will camp you for long. But you, you, you will think it's a curse. That's why the David said, give me understanding and I shall live. Where God is taking you is not where you are planning to go. That's not where you are planning to go. If he wants to help you so that the journey will be easier for you, he gives you understanding. He says, oh, this way you are taking me. You'll be able to live by it. One more time, give you understanding. And I shall live. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding. And I shall live. Give me understanding. Give me understanding and I shall live. I'm out and pray that prayer for sometimes.